The Lady of Elke, the mysterious Queen of Atlantis with the strange devices on her temples. About four videos ago, I today posted a video of what the uh, Egyptian priest revealed to Solon. It's from Plato's Timaeus. And he describes there that the continent of Atlantis was in the middle of the Atlantic, what today is the Atlantic Ocean. And that uh, they used, the people from Europe used that as a stepping stone to go to the opposite side of that, the Atlantis uh, uh, area, which was, of course, uh, by process of elimination, the Americas. Now, you can watch that one. That has a lot of information. But this here is a very strange contraption. What is this? Who and what does the famous Lady of Elke, who was found in Spain, as we know in Timaeus, uh, the priest of uh, Egypt who was talking to Solon says that Atlantis was just beyond the, the area of Gibraltar. Spain, of course, is right there facing the Atlantic. So who and what does the famous Lady of Elke, who was found in Spain, and many are interested in it, depict her mysterious appearance and the strange enigma that surrounds her origin. Although not much is known about the bust of this enigmatic statue, many describe it as the quote-unquote Queen of Atlantis. This particular bust dates back to between the 5th and the 4th century BC. However, the design on the clothes she wears and the strange huge circular artifacts on the temples on the side of her head like elaborate wheels or shields the size of the head, refer to something exotic, something sp from space, something which seems to have come from an alien civilization, a sophisticated high-tech device, an unknown means of possible communication. They also refer to an ancient civilization that knew and managed manage such technology. The bust is 57 centimeters tall, weighing 65 kilograms, it has a symmetrical, perfectly harmonious face, while it seems that initially the find was painted in bright red and blue. If we look at the bust from its profile, we will see that it has a remarkable protrusion of a large and significant elongated skull covered with a conical hat. Immediately, this refers to the well-known elongated skulls of Paracas, without necessarily meaning that the figure has a similarly long skull. Now, let's remember that uh, this type of a medallion was also found of such a uh, woman wearing these uh, contraptions on the side of her head. This medallion was found in Utah, of all places. So again, was it because of the fact that from Atlantis, people were reaching the Americas in antiquity? Now, at the back of the sculpture of the Lady of Elke, which was found in Spain, there is a, an opening, a pit, which indicates that it may have been used as a container for some other unknown object or possibly for documents that could reveal its mystery. We don't know, but there's an opening in the back. It was discovered August 4th, 1897 on a private estate, which is now an archaeological site near Elke, Spain. It was discovered by working farmers. However, according to local tradition, it was 14-year-old Manuel Campello Esclapes who discovered it. Initially, the Lady of Elke was bought for 4,000 francs by the French archaeologist Pierre Paris and became an exhibit in the Louvre Museum. About seven decades later, it was recovered and became a member of the permanent collection of the National Archaeological Museum of Madrid in Spain. This very interesting bust was dealt with, as was natural and expected by the father of the theory of ancient astronauts, Eric von Daniken. His views and reasons around the Lady of Elke brought a new dimension to this unknown origin, so many theories have emerged that refer to the wheels on the temples as kind of a spacecraft, which could come from the considered high technology and know-how culture of lost Atlantis. Somehow, in this space, the Lady of Elke becomes a lady or the queen of Atlantis. This may all sound exciting or as a science fiction script, but there may be some clues that, albeit hypothetical, link Lady Elke to Atlantis. In 1966, a medallion relief was unveiled from Utah, USA,
depicting a lady almost identical to that of the Lady of Elke. Could these two ancient relics be somehow connected with each other, despite the huge distance between Elke and Utah, with an entire ocean between them? And let's remember that Plato's Timaeus, what the Egyptian priest revealed to Solon, was that Atlantis was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, so it's under the waters of um, the Atlantic right now, and that the, uh, you know, from Europe they used to stop in Atlantis and then go further west, being, of course, the Americas. Of course, we've had tremendous earth changes since then, one of them being Atlantis being sunk. The island of Rhodes also used to go up and down from ancient texts, but uh, uh, it went down twice, but then it came back up again, and it's still up. The island of Rhodes, just uh, off the coast of western Turkey, in the Aegean Sea of Greece. So, uh, could these two ancient relics from Utah and Spain be somehow connected to each other despite the huge distances between LK and Utah with the entire ocean between them? There are several traditions and mythological elements that come from these areas, and especially Central America, that link them to an ancient or more ancient civilization from the Atlantic Ocean and Atlantis. Similarly, there are reports and legends from coastal and beyond areas of the Straits of Gibraltar related to Atlantis. And while we have the relief from Utah, the Medallion of Utah, at the Guimet National Museum of Asian Art, there is a terracotta artifact found at Chandraketura in West Bengal, India, which depicts a female figure focusing heavily on the curves of a woman crafted in India. And like the fascinating bust of the Lady of Elke, or the relief from the medallion in Utah, it has similar shields and wheels on the temples, while displaying beautiful jewelry that hangs from the ear areas. They seem to have a lot in common, so one wonders if they depict the same type of figure, something that cannot be ruled out. Looking very carefully at various museums around the world, there are possibly other similar exhibits that could be said to have some comparable resemblance to the Lady of Elke. And what would that mean? What was it about an ancient world civilization that dictated some common features? For the Lady of Elke, the carefully crafted limestone artifact is considered by some to be a depiction of an ancient deity by Carthage. Tanit, also known as the virgin goddess of war, and was also worshipped as a fertility deity. Is she the lady of Elsi, the priestess that, with some strange for our data ritual helmet? Is it an ancient deity? Is it an ancient astronaut with a high-tech device on her head? Be that as it may, whatever the origin, whatever it depicts, it's widely regarded as one of the most striking examples of sculpture ever found on our planet. High-tech ancient queen of Spain, and I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.